Here are the steps my team goes through in sprint planning. So first we take a look at a summary of the last sprint. We talk about what the goal was, um, how many points we committed to versus how many we completed, and any unique events or circumstances that may have impacted the sprint. Next, we review any stories that were incomplete or work in progress. And depending on their priority, we'll move them back to the product backlog or we roll them forward into the next sprint. And we keep the points with the story, meaning we don't give ourselves credit in the last sprint for any incomplete work. If we roll the story forward into the next sprint, the points will apply um, to the next sprint. Then we look at our team calendar and confluence to see if we have any known outages in an upcoming sprint. And we note those outages in a Google spreadsheet, which easily integrates with confluence. So we're taking into account things like vacation or a company hackathon. And this gives us a percent value of our expected capacity for the sprint. Then we take the average of the last five sprints velocity and we adjust it according to the expected capacity. This gives us a projection of how many points worth of work we think we can accomplish in the next sprint cycle. This method of capacity planning assumes that your team has a stable velocity. So that means you've had the same team members together for at least the last three sprints. Now that we know how much work we can reasonably get done, we can start pulling stories into the sprint. So the product owner brings a prioritized list of stories that meets our definition of ready, and the development team determines how many to pull in and commit to delivering. Then we come up with a sprint theme together. Sometimes your product owner can start by reviewing their goal for the sprint first, and this can help everyone decide which stories to focus on um, with a collective theme. For our team, the theme helps us remember to keep the sprint focused and to avoid pulling different or competing priorities, which could create context switching and slow us down. And sometimes we like to have fun with it and see how creative we can get um, with our themes. We document all of our sprint planning sessions in Confluence, so it's helpful to look back at a high level and see what we worked on. Next, we volunteer for stories. Since we want to encourage um, swarming and pairing up on stories, these are fluid. They aren't fixed individual story assignments. Really, anyone can work on any story during the sprint. We volunteer just for the first few stories at the top of the sprint backlog, so we understand who is starting where. And lastly, we do a confidence vote as a gut check or a mini inspect and adapt exercise. Everyone holds up their fist and votes. Five fingers means you are 100% confident we can complete our sprint commitment and zero fingers means zero confidence. So if a team member shows a relatively lower score, you can go back and adjust the sprint plan accordingly. After this, we're done with sprint planning and we can start the sprint. 